Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. We are from Group One. We will answer the Q&A question. Hi and Assalamualaikum. I am Alia Nazirah and I would like to answer question from Nelly Irjina on how can FGV contribute to better economy scale. Pump upstream cluster is form of core of FGV and is and it is their largest revenue earner. FGV can process over 15 million ton of fresh bunches annually, which is 5 million uh, tons from their own plantation and the remaining of 10 million tons are from Felda settlers and independent suppliers. FGV output is also more than any other producer. At the same time, it will make FGV as the third largest oil pump operator, this will make FGV to earn more profit every year and this will contribute to better economy scale. Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. My name is Nur Alia Balkis. So uh, today I will answer the question from Nur Shafika Amelia. So the question is why was the land lease agreement which is LLA made for 99 years? So. A land lease agreement, which is LLA, is a legal contract between a lessor and a lessee who are often known as landlord and tenant, though uh, this term is rarely used. In this case, uh, the land lease agreement was made for 99 years because in Malaysia, the maximum years to do the LLA is 99 years. This is because the longer leasing period is the better. The lessee is protected and has the right to peacefully use the land without any interruption from the lesson unless agreed. Further was uh, to earn RM248 million in annual payments in return for le leasing its land as well as a 15% share of the income. Hello everyone, my name is Nur Atira Binti Ismail. I will answer the question from Farah Ismahani from Group 3. The question that I get is, what did FGV Holding Berhad do to decrease the amount of slow moving inventories? My answer is, the plantation operation has been focused on tightening procurement processes involving the capital and operating expenditure and also implementing the new tasking system for infill the workers. Other than that, the crude palm oil price was 20% lower. From that, it did not affect the company profitability mainly because of improved the operational performance and lower cost. Assalamualaikum, I am Nur Farah Shazana. So the question that I got is, how do you classify European un Union, China and also Indian uh, buyers as? So based on my presentation, I have mentioned that there are five types of buyers which are innovators, uh, adopters, early majority, late majority and also excessive traditionalists. So uh, in my opinion, FGV's major buyers which are from European Union, China and also India are considered as adopters. So this type of group, they represent true opinion leaders who set examples for by their decision. So they are usually willing to try new products if they will, if it will significantly improve their lifestyle and also allow improvement in their business. So in order to do that, um, they need to understand the benefits and also seek out references from satisfied users before making it the purchase. So this type of buyer, they usually they typically represent about fifteen percent of the whole market. Assalamualaikum and hello, I am Farah Fakia. I would like to answer the question given by Fatin Chazmina, which she asked what are the reasons from Zakaria itself to allow sales to Safitex and what are their, their relationship. So from the article that I found, there are few reasons given by Zakaria why he allows sales to Safitex. The first one is because Safitex debt amounted to less than 0.2% of FGV's total earnings. So it may not affect FGV's financial performance as the amount of debt is not material for FGV. Uh, this is wrong because the debt will amount to 49.92 million ringgit and it already exceeded the credit limit. Besides that, he also said that the owner of Safitex had been overseas and was hence unable to settle the payment on time. From Zakaria's point of view, it would not be a problem for Safitex to settle the debt 
payment as FTX was a large company. So FGV supposedly have the confidence that the firm would fully repay the debt. All of these reasons were solely from Zakara point of view where it brings impact to FGV's company performance. So for the second question, Safitex own FGV subsidiary, which is the Lima All Products in Anberhad. So apparently, Safitex is the debtors for FGV and it is at the centre of allegate accounting irregularities in FGV. Hello, I'm Patricia Rodswan from Group 1. Now, I would like to answer a question that is, does FGV already establish procedure for recruitment? If no, what would you recommend? So, to make it clear, every company already have a procedure of recruitment as it is a compulsory to do it. It is just depends on the company itself whether they want to apply it or not. As for FGV, they made a statement that they are committed to upholding labor standard that is priority for their labor's human right. So they have been dutifully in taking steps in various initiatives and programs for it. It also said that they are continuing to strengthen their procedures and processes in the recruitment of migrant workers. That's all from us. Thank you.